So this is wave 10 of this. So if you've ever been here, you know how absolutely ridiculous this stuff gets. <laughs> um, and yeah, I can just walk around and just constantly heal. I don't have to constantly heal. I have so much health that it's not a big deal anymore. But I could get absolutely beamed by these guys and I'm fine. Just heal whenever I need to like this. I'm just an invincible tank. I don't know if it's possible to be tankier than this. I'm about to get frozen, and then I'll, I'll probably die if I get frozen, you know? But yeah, I'm virtually unkillable as long as I'm paying attention with this build now, and then I have the largest AoE in the entire game, so. So this is my Glunny build. Finally have settled on the last few mods, and I just have a ridiculous amount of health and defense while doing this now realized that for any amount of extra heal that I gave, if I just gave more health, since it's a percentage heal, I would end up healing the same amount anyway, but I'd have more health. I have one more catalyst to do to fix the last slots, but this is actually the highest ranged AoE in the entire game, and it's going to get even better when they patch Glay. So right now, Ultimate Glay, this move is not doing as much damage as it should when my health is lower. But yeah, longest ranged AoE in the entire game. So, look at that. Kind of ridiculous, honestly. <laughs> and this is even maxed out, so uh, I'm missing like 1.6 meters or something like that, but I figured I don't actually need it. I tailor-made this build to make sure that I could do my bossing stuff just as fast still, and that my bossing stuff would not get affected and messed up from this. So yeah, this is Glunny. That's how ridiculously good my heal is, by the way. So, I'm basically an invincible tank, if I pay attention. And in content that is not bosses like this, I could clear this pretty much faster than Bunny can now. Because she has to run around and my AoE is larger than hers. So Massive Sanguification doubles the range of your second ability. It makes it do a little less damage, but you double it and it doesn't require any amount of life orbs anymore. And you could use, so you could use it whenever you want. It also gathers the three life orbs so that you could use your alt whenever you want. Every time you use it, it takes 15% of your health. Uh, you need to have that swiftness buff on the left proc from it so that you could get the cooldown to be instant. Uh, what I did right there, just going into a frenzy, just made it to where it won't be instant for this second here, because you can't have both multi-talented perks on at the same time. Bam this in these areas, and then whenever your health is low to where, uh, where it just seems a little bit too risky, or you're going to go low enough that you won't be able to use your move again, what you do is you could either leave frenzy and heal by just pushing F like this, at, or your second ability, and you could just heal like this, but you could also do this, this is a little trick, uh, you could use the second, and right after the damage numbers hit, you swap out a frenzy and you'll heal. So you'll do the damage and you'll heal. So it will save you time, and it will end up you know, healing you faster, and also just make it more efficient. So use your ability, swap out after the damage comes out, and you heal, so. Just like that. There's not enough enemies close enough for me to full heal on that one, but. Yeah, makes you extremely tanky and extremely good at killing mobs. Uh, so whenever I'm leveling Glay, I just go in here and I use this. It's making farming gold and stuff a lot faster. So I ended up using my bossing build against hard mode dungeons instead of this build. So this is basically just for normal mode, for any gold farms in the game. This is for the fusion reactor tower things. Use this one for just like all of that stuff because this one doesn't have the infinite ammo until I swap to the other preset. The crystal catalyst that I used, I made sure are all slots that will work for both so that I could swap between this build and infinite ammo build whenever I want to. If you switch out of frenzy state and use your third ability, you actually get increased recovery and you get a move faster too, so that's always nice. This is how you play Glunny. Just always try to have swiftness instead of the other perks of multi-talented. So right now, if I left frenzy, right? and I go back into Frenzy, I'm gonna have the attribute one and that will mess up the cooldown. So you have to try to avoid that. See how the cooldown's longer now? So you need to try to make sure that if you do have to swap in and out, you swap out while the timer's there so that it doesn't replace it. And then you could keep the infinite cooldown going. Also, being at a higher health threshold, instead of having the increased healing recovery, 
allows me to stay at lower healths easier without the risk of dying because half my health right now is gonna give me around 8,000 plus health anyway. And because it doesn't heal me by as much, when I do heal, it's just gonna keep me lower as well so I don't end up losing a lot of my damage. This is wave 10, by the way, of this. Where it's supposed to be dead time, you know? So this is going to be the settings for the mobbing part of this build. So massive sanglification, I explained to you how to use it earlier and why. It is without a doubt the best mod that Glay has. It makes her so much more survivable. It doubles the range of your second, it makes it free to use your second, and it makes it so that your second in Frenzy gives you three life orbs immediately. Whichever grapple of your choice, go ahead and put it here. So for this build, what you're seeing right now, it's not completely done yet. I'm going to set this one to be worth three points instead of six, and that will allow me to have this slot be empty. And because of that, I could transfer multi-talented to some other mods if I wanted to, but for the most part, I'm gonna keep multi-talented on. So now this one, I am able to fit the increased HP here. Uh, and then another HP over here. I had this on medical support before, but as I explained earlier, if you double your health, since this game always has like percentage-based heals anyway, having 30% extra heal on like a 10% heal is not going to be nearly as much health gained per a heal as if you literally just double your health. So I just decided to double my health because more survivability, the game's easier, you die less, you need to heal less often, and it just overall just seemed to be the better choice. So yeah, maxing your health seems to be better than HP heal. So I have Spear and Shield, mostly for the extra skill power. If you feel like you need to be even tankier, it's only 8%, so putting this on a different defense is fine. I would put the blue defense just because you could use it on multiple characters and it is kind of expensive. But the one that's going to give you the most defense is going to be this one, Shield Conversion. So if you're trying to min-max defense, go for that. I don't think I need it, so I am on Spear and Shield for the extra damage. Stim Accelerant, this one is the one that gives you the most HP. I don't have it fully leveled right now because I still need to Crystal Catalyst this for the rest of the build. So you need all four of these, Nimble Fingers, MP Conversion, Focus on Dimension, Focus on Non-Attribute. Focus on non-attribute, that will give you the instant cooldown combined with multi-talented. So fitting multi-talented into the build, I had to basically give up on walk a tightrope and dangerous ambush. But when I was doing the testing on like how fast I kill interceptors, it was within like one to two second differences. Uh, because multi-talented also does give you the all attribute damage plus 30% every time you reproc your third ability, which is your infinite ammo. When, so this will give you very similar damage to walk a tightrope when fighting bosses and then you're going to want to go ahead and put both of these range mods here so having that on and not having range on your reactor you'll be at 34.4 meters on massive sanglific so that is all the way back here that you could heal so this is how far away you could heal and do damage with this now I found that maxing the range and just doing that like slightly further isn't worth it because it is only to about here I think Okay, so so if you completely max the range and you put it on your reactor too, you could stand here. So I decided it's not really worth it, it's just like a few inches. So because you were getting enough cooldown from multi-talented and all the other mods in your skill tree, you also don't need cooldown or range on your reactor for this. So the actual best in slot for your reactor is going to be non-attribute damage and also additional skill attack when attacking whichever enemy type you are fighting. So all of the additional skill attack when attacking buffs, those are the best in slot for whatever area you're in. There's nothing better. If you wanted an all around one for the mobbing section, you could just go non-attribute dimension, that's fine. But if you wanted like perfect rolls for each one, this is better. Since you're using this build in the farming sections and like defense quests and stuff, you actually don't really need to use your gun much. So just any reactor that does non-attribute dimension with any gun will do preferably a SMG or pistol or something so it's faster preferably with the gun you're using but you don't need it to be the gun you're using if you're just running around spamming the key you know since I farm so much I have one of these for Legion of Immortality and one for 
Legion of Darkness. I don't think I have an Order of Truth one. That's the only one I'm missing. That is what you're best in slot for your reactor for uh, each zone that you are going to be in is. Good ones to look for right after those is going to be non-attribute, dimension, cooldown is good. You don't need it. You're going to have instant cooldown on your F, but it could help for, you know, like your third if you care or when you mess up extra range but it's very small is good you don't really need duration with this one anymore skill cost would be good but it's kind of such a small thing that i don't really see it as that worth it and hp heal hp heal could be pretty good now if uh if you're going for the absolute most damage and you don't care about your health and defense which honestly you probably don't need to worry about it at this point with this build the slayer set is probably the best one i just have annihilation set on because i have a lot of gold perks on it and it gives me a lot of health and defense bobbing section you really don't have to worry about your firearm attack and stuff but i just leave this on because i'm gonna use it up for bossing and stuff anyway and it's just a good set in general you could end farming this is just super easy against devourer health on this one and then on this one if you like are going for tankiness and stuff you could do double defense since this is a build that i'm using in farming for the most part i've used my gold drop rate firearm and then for this one i usually have the character consumable drop rate on and then this one max hp module or kuiper modules give you kuiper anyway when you get duplicates so it's a good one anyway but yeah you, you're definitely going to try to get max hp on this one so this is my bossing build. This is the one that's kind of messed up more until I crystal catalyze my character one more time. So on this one, I have the HP. This this one is going to become Stim Accelerant when my Stim Accelerant is maxed out. And then I have Battle of Stamina. So I could fit this because I have a gold cooldown reactor. You might not be able to fit this. You might have to do a different one and I'll show you what in a second. And then this mod is going to become spear and shield. So I can't fit it right now, but it will become spear and shield. And yeah, multi-talented stays on. It's the 30% extra attribute damage bonus. And it actually is really good. And multi-talented is just cheaper at max than some of these other ones. I tested dangerous ambush and walk a tightrope only at 13, but it's like a second or two difference. Most of the time it's identical whenever I fight bosses. So I figured since multi-talented is so good for my other build, I am fine not being able to equip the other ones if I can't. So, uh, so on this one, what you're going to change is you are going to remove the purple skill expansion the one that reduces your damage and you're going to replace it with this skill duration then you need to replace one of the hps with battle of stamina for the 8.8 percent .8 duration and then for this version of it you are going to need a reactor that has a good enough cooldown so let me just check this one if it does or not so this one would not work so I have gold cooldown mod Thunder Cage builds and Python builds. So for this one, I have a duration up and a skill cooldown one that works as well. And that will make my duration longer than my cooldown. And that is what you need for this to work. So your duration needs to be longer than your cooldown. If you do not have a reactor where this works, there are a few things you could try. You could try trading this blue one. If you are having survivability issues, trade this blue one for maximum duration. So you're going to lose some damage, but that might be the duration that you need for this to end up working for you. But what is most likely going to happen if you don't have a good enough cooldown, I think you need around like 0.7% cooldown or you need a 0.6 and a duration up one. And if you're having issues surviving, you could remove this one now and you could go ahead and slot in the higher health ones instead. So you would do that and then you could go ahead and put back in Stim Accelerant and your health will go back up. Your defense is going to go down, but you'll have enough health to not worry about it. And that will also give you the duration a lot longer than the cooldown. And honestly, that one might just be a little bit easier anyway to have the duration like a whole second longer than the cooldown. But I usually notice the cooldown comes up on the bottom and that's my cue to push it again. Go ahead and put both of these on too if you don't need the health or the defense. The reason I'm putting Spear and Shield is actually going to be for the damage, but that does end up getting you up to 9 seconds duration, which is just really nice. What my Thunder Cage is built like, I use Mental Focus because if your duration is longer than your cooldown, you could permanently keep up this 150 stacks. And I just have Chill on it because it's what fits right now. If I wanted this to be the highest damage ever specifically for bosses, I would probably remove the Chill Enhancement and go ahead and put Have Aiming on as well. 
and then this would be even better but the thing about thunder cage is it is really 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 good against mobs so i like leaving it just like this because elemental cannot weak point hit but it does do 30 percent of the damage of the gun and that damage can crit so it is nice to have when you are mobbing on my vestigial i actually have different ones for different areas because again the against enemies are the best in slot mods it's like a flat damage increase that then gets multiplied on top of i believe I have all of the elements maxed out except fire right now and I ideally you actually would have electric on all of them right now I have them with like the correct element most of the time but if you get attribute status effect trigger rate and electric and then you just go ahead and put all of the elemental damage on the mods itself instead then electric damage lowers the defense of enemies. So when I'm fighting bosses, this is what mine usually looks like. I have different elements for each one. I'll put real life fighter. Uh, when I am using it for mobs, I'll have lethal finish on. Uh, but yeah, since this gun doesn't really weak point much and it doesn't crit, just having the flat damage of the element that they're weak to is the strongest thing you could do for it. But I still think overall the electric one is the best because electric reduces defense. So if you were gonna only do one element, I suggest doing electric. My sniper is not done. I'm using piercing light because I'm using this mostly to break the orbs on Frostwalker and also to break in rage tubes. And in rage tubes do not count as weak points. So I was trying to build this gun more around critting and flat damage than I was weak points. But when I max this thing out, I'm gonna have the weak point ones maxed as well. This is my Python. I'm not done with my Python yet because I've hit the point on it where the only thing I could really increase on it is gonna be crit chance or element. So I'd have to max out an element or I would have to level crit and I just don't know what to do with it because it's only good to level crit on this gun if you are rolling with an ends gives you the permanent like high crit ammo. If not, I think you want to do element. And this one came base with toxic, so I'll probably just make it toxic for other characters. I'm going to show you everybody's favorite devourer with this. So my python and my thunder cage kill within one second of each other, but my python actually has the better reactor. So I honestly, if you are only going to level one gun, thunder cage or python, I highly suggest picking thunder cage. It's better for mobbing and it is better for killing the boss's tube things because her ultimate actually can't hurt those tubes. But yeah, this is uh, this is the build for my Thunder Cage and bossing. And multi-talented is honestly really good. It gives you the 30% damage boost every time you push your third key here. I don't know if that affects launchers. Uh, so yeah, that takes about 13 seconds for this one. And that's with my Thunder Cage. My Python sometimes gets 12 seconds. This build will not ruin your Glay if you're a launcher Glay instead of massive sanguification. It is still very, very, very viable with launchers. So I put on a little bit of a harder boss so I could show you how this is done and why this build works so good and why you want to keep range on. So if you have mental focus on, the way you start this is you switch to Frenzy, you push your second ability to unlock your ultimate, you pop your alt, then you pop your infinite ammo, and you just start holding the trigger down so you can stack those mental focus numbers up to 150 on the left. And then you will be doing a significant amount of more damage like this, so it just you just don't let it go. I'm going to try not to kill this guy too fast, so we'll see how this goes. Oh, he's already in this. But this is why you do the range. In intercept fights, all of these that are destructible count as an enemy. So with the range on, you do this and you can just heal all of your health. So you never have to worry about your health again, really, uh, in interceptor fights. And you get to be just like ridiculously tanky. So I could just sit in here and I could just stand in this stuff and I'm fine. Whenever there is any type of encounter now, my defense is really high, my health is really high. Whenever I am with other groups of players and somebody needs to do something where we can't let them die, it's gonna be me. So I pick up the flames on Frostwalker. I could just stand in the lava here. I could get attacked. I am just basically an immortal god. This is why the last video I called it Immortal Glay. This is basically the reason. This is a hard pyromancer here. As long as I don't screw around, I basically can't die, especially because all of the health. So all of that health is making these heal percentages just massive. Yeah, again, the way you play this, Frenzy, you use your massive sanguification, your second ability, and they just knocked me down. 
to get your ultimate here and then you pop your alt and then you would start spamming this middle button and getting your 150 percent stacks in the beginning before the fight even starts that is how you end up speeding it up a lot there are certain situations where real life fighter is better but for the most part mental focus is going to be whenever your health gets too low you want it low to do the extra damage but you don't want it so low that you won't be able to use your ability so if it gets so low that you're not going to be able to use your second that is when you want to end up popping your heal this right here is another reason i prefer thunder cage over python is breaking these things is almost impossible with python but it's actually really a lot easier with thunder cage i have I don't think I have ever broken one of these tubes here. I don't think I've ever broken one of those before while using my Python, but I break them with my Thunder Cage no problem. Uh, this build makes all of these fights ridiculously easy. I could probably kill this guy within like 20 seconds too if I actually really try, but I'm chilling. But the goal is just to show you guys how absolutely ridiculously survivable this is. One of my favorite parts about this build is on Obstructor. I could pop these balls and heal off of them from the mob slain part of it. I don't need the extra range, so it's like I, I could do what Bunny does too. And I could just fight this guy in mid. This is absolutely the best Glay build for Obstructor if you're not just instantly killing him. But we're saved! Thank you for my instant cooldown ball killer. If you made it this far, thank you. It's probably one of the longest videos I have ever made. I have been streaming on Twitch and TikTok, twitch.tv slash GameSager. All my stuff is GameSager, so I put a lot of shorter guides on TikTok. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope you like, comment, and subscribe. And that's my creator code. If you put it in at creators.nexon.com, it helps me out a lot whenever you buy stuff in-game. So yeah, I'll see you guys next time.